My name is Bruins, Chrome Developer Relations Engineer here at Google, and this is Unleash the Power of Scroll-Driven Animations. In the previous video, I showed you how to create your very first scroll-driven animation. For this, I used a scroll timeline that tracks the scroller's scroll progress from start to end. In this video, I'll show you a similar, yet slightly different type of scroll-driven animation. One that tracks an element as it crosses the scroll port. Enter the view timeline. Before I continue, there's two terms that need to be clarified, namely scroll container and scroll port. These two terms are not the same, but are closely related to each other. When the contents of a box are too big for that box, there's two things that can happen. Either the things that overflow can be visible, or they can get clipped. When clipped, the box is often scrollable too. When this happens, the box is called a scroll container. Scrolling can happen programmatically or through a scrollbar mechanism offered by the browser. The visible part of a scroll container is called the scroll port. It coincides with the padding box of the scroll container. The distinction between both becomes more clear when using classic scroll bars. The viewport can also become scrollable. When that happens, the resulting scroll container is referred to as the root scroller. With those two terms clarified, let's take a look at view timeline. A view timeline is a special type of scroll timeline. Similar to a scroll timeline, it responds to scroll, but instead of tracking the scroll offset of a scroll container, it tracks the relative position of a subject within a scroll port. If you're familiar with the Intersection Observer, this probably rings a bell. Check out this demonstration right here. Progress only starts counting up from 0% from the moment the tracked subject starts intersecting the scroll port at the end edge. And by the time the subject has left the scroll port at the start edge, progress is at 100%. For horizontal scroll containers, this behaves in the same way. Progress starts counting up from 0% when the subject enters the scroll port at the end edge and reaches 100% when the subject has just left the scroll port. And again, this is all scroll driven. If you scroll back, progress counts backwards. And if you pause scrolling, progress also pauses. Let's look at an example. On this page, I have a few images that are part of the content. I think it would be nice to animate these images as they cross the scroll board. Let's add a revealing animation to each image. To do this in CSS, set up the animation property to apply the animation effect to the image. And as a reminder, this animation currently runs on the document timeline. In the previous video, I used the scroll function to create a scroll timeline. And as you might have guessed, there's also a view function to create a view timeline. Just like before, you attach this to an element using the animation timeline property in CSS. When put alongside the rest of the code, the function creates a view timeline instance for each element matched by the selector. With the code in place, the images do indeed reveal themselves as they cross the scroll board. It's pretty nice, but as you can see, it's also not perfect. It's only when the image has fully exited the scroll board that it has completely revealed itself. In the next video, I'll show you the proper way of solving things. But for now, let's fix it by adjusting the keyframes to speed up the animation. The workaround fix here is to have the opacity be at 1 when at the 50% keyframe. And look, here's an updated recording. So nice. And that with just one line of extra CSS. Amazing. The view function accepts two arguments to configure it. The first one is the axis, which takes the same values as shown earlier with the scroll function. The default value is block. The other argument is the view timeline inset, which allows you to adjust the view progress visibility range. The default value is auto. With an inset, you are virtually moving the edges of the scroll port around. Positive insets result in an inward adjustment and negative values in an outward adjustment. This adjustment affects when the subject is considered to be in view or not. Oh, if you're wondering where the scroller argument went to, there is no such one here. View timelines always track the subject within its nearest ancestor scroll container. To create a view timeline to use with the Web Animations API, create a new view timeline instance. Options for the view timeline class are subject, axis, and inset. 
The subject is a reference to the DOM node that you want to track. The snippet you see on screen has the same outcome as the CSS version I showed you earlier. It loops over each content image, creating an animation with its own view timeline one by one. So that's view timelines for you. They track a certain subject as it crosses its crawl port. In CSS, you create such a timeline using the view function, and in JavaScript, you have the view timeline class. In the next video, I'll show you how to attach an animation to only a small part of the entire timeline using the animation range property. See you there.